why would I change? You know, I don't miss anything. I feel amazing. And I just don't waste time thinking about what I'm going to eat, doc. I push myself to be a high performance for individual, you know, especially now and as an entrepreneur, I look at business as, as a sport, consider myself a business athlete, prepare myself like a businessman and an athlete, right? To perform well. It's amazing. So it was literally a waste of my life. I, I live to eat. I got to eat seven times a day, every two and a half hours. Now I'll eat one, two times a day, throw that thing medium rare, psh, 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 some salt and I'm good. Good morning. We have with us today, uh, is it My Mikey Gomez, right? Is that? How are you, Doc? Hey, I'm good. Good to see you, man. How you doing? <clears throat> you as well. Where are you located? Great, thank you. Where are you located at? <clears throat> I'm in uh, Orlando, Florida right now. I uh, caught a red eye. Sorry, my voice. I came from a huge global convention that we had in my company. So we've been screaming all weekend. Oh, okay. You weren't at the, uh, you weren't in Vegas, were you? No, no, I was in um in uh, Glendale, Arizona. Okay, they had a big, they had a big uh, mixed martial. Well, they had a jujitsu deal at, in Las Vegas this weekend, as you may be aware. Anyway, well, 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 welcome and thanks for doing this. Can you give us a little bit about your background? Absolutely. So, my name is Mikey Gomez. I'm 40 years old. I'm a former professional MMA fighter. I fought professionally for 13 years. I'm a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, and. Uh, <clears throat> this is my six month of going carnivore. Okay, nice, nice. Yeah, that's it's it's uh well we'll talk about it. Well, I you know, I, I just I'm just I'm sore from jujitsu last night. In fact, I'm just thinking about that. I was in there uh, you know, doing my doing doing the deal, trying to learn, learn how to do this stuff. It's a lot of fun. Um, so where did you fight? You did 13 years professional fighting, different different organizations, or where did you do that at? Uh yeah, so I've been training Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu since 1998. I started when I was 16 years old, mm -hmm. and I fought for 13 years. I fought for Elite XC, for Bellator. Uh, I even won a Cage, Cage Warriors uh, world title along the journey as a welterweight. And, uh, <clears throat> man, it was such a journey, man. I wish I would have known about uh, the way I'm eating now to be able to compete at that time. It's, it's, it's very incredible what's been happening with my body. Yeah. It's interesting how, um, you know, obviously it's, it's uh, MMA stuff and it's, is is tough on the body. There's no doubt about it. A lot of people have injuries. It's, it's a challenging, uh, to say the least sport and there's a, you know, recovery becomes very important. I have a friend who's fighting in Bellator, uh, this weekend in, in, in Dublin, Ireland named Georgie Carhan, and he's been doing carnivore now for, I think about almost two years now. And he's, he's, he's Georgie. Fighting. Yeah. Georgie Carhan. Yeah. Yeah. We fought on the same card before. I know Georgie. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Great yeah, guy. Yeah. He's been doing it. Yeah. He's a, he's a good guy. So he's fighting this weekend, somebody in, in, in Ireland, I think. But, um, how did you get into what made you decide to do a carnivore diet? That's, you know, it's still pretty, you know, it's still, still kind of considered a little bit weird even today. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, a lot of ego and pride going into the um, uh, fighting for so long and paying for dietitians, having people that were showing me, right, how to eat. Because I'm a very weak kid, naturally growing up, dog. Super asthmatic. Grew up waking up in hospitals. Like, I was not supposed to be an athlete, right? I was I, like, when I had talk about asthma, I was a kid that. You know, when we were all growing up and the weather changed a little bit and all the kids were playing out, you know, it seems ancient, but we used to play outside. And I was like the kid that was sent out of the home, like a fat little kid, right? Because my mom would put on two, three jackets on. That's how I grew up. So anyways, <clears throat> I competed, right? I thought I knew all these things. And um, I saw my body declining in 2009. I won the Cage Warriors belt in 2008. A management took me out to California and uh, my body just started getting tighter. And I was around 27, I believe, 26, 27 years old. And I figured, you know, the same old conversation that people have with themselves is, you know, I fight. You see the people around you, everybody's kind of moving like that, you know, that's been more retired. They're very stiff. And um, I just thought that was the natural progression, right, of a human body life um as an athlete so 
I called it quits in 20, 2016. And I was working out, training, right? I'm a digital entrepreneur today. I've gotten in the, uh, in the uh, digital space after competing. And I was working out. Everything was great. And in 2018, <clears throat> as I was walking to the office, my psoas got tight and my hips shifted. One leg got, it became longer than the other, a tad bit. And uh, it was a tumultuous time in my life as well. It's, it's, it's very tough, you know, to uh, switch, switch life from being a professional athlete. That was my identity. And then I left. So uh, it kind of got taken away from me. My, my identity was, was attached to MMA, to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And um, a, I went through a massive um, struggle in their financial struggles. And this is in mid-2015. So I'm already talking about 2018. but. Um, Got back on my feet. But during that time, that injury, whatever happened to me, um, it just kept getting me more, more bitter. I couldn't work out. I couldn't be out. I couldn't be healthy, you know. And uh, that lasted for four years, Doc. Nobody could uh, get a grip on it. I couldn't find anybody that would work around on my so, so as. And I became depressed. And since I'm a digital entrepreneur now, I was able, and after 2020, you know, I was able to keep working from home. And I lived in pain, doc. My back was all, because I have to it a disc. It just became a mess in my back. It seemed like a spider web that was pissed off at me on my back and I couldn't stretch. So I met a couple people that were uh, plant-based people. <clears throat> This is uh, six months ago. <laughs> hold it, hold it together, Doc. <laughs> and uh, they showed me that movie. I forget the name. It's actually a former teammate of mine as well. I trained with uh, James Wilkes to make this one movie Game about changers, yeah. Game changers. Yes, yeah. yes, about being plant based. I'm like, wow. Maybe I should stop eating meat. And I always had a heavy red meat diet when I when I would train. Because I didn't know that naturally it boosts testosterone. But I just knew as a kid that it made you more aggressive. So I'm like, let me be a little bit more aggressive, you know, going into the battlefield. Because I'm naturally, you know, not like the toughest dude around. So, you know, looking for an edge. So I know now what my body would feel like, you know, during that period of time, 90 days of just eating red meat. Uh, so, But anyways, watching that, I was like, wow, maybe red meat, because everybody says it's not good for you crazy that we ever think that right and uh it's crazy because my mom is like she's the best of the best right till today at 67 years old she's the one that started carnivore she was on her second month hmm. at that time and she's like i'm researching you know look at this dr sean and i'm seeing these things and she just said just to do it you know like researching and learning and i did not go plant-based doc i started going carnivore and I mean, I'm clear, I'm fired up. I can't even let you speak, man. You know, that I'm just feeling so good. This six months in, my body loosened up. You know, I feel like a kid. I'm able to go on my knees, like just, it, it, it seems like every joint got lubricated. And I feel amazing. And my sister as well, doc, she was doing it. She was, uh, she was overweight and I wasn't the same person that I grew up with. And um, you know, she lost 28 pounds and she has a way better lifestyle as well. Well, that's great. That's, 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 you know, really neat to see. I see it, it. You know, I see this sort of stuff every single day, which is kind of cool when you see it, but as a fighter, you know, you think about what your body went through and, you know, you're, 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 you're you know, you're fighting around injuries all the time and you just, this is sore, that's sore, but you still got to train for a fight. How do you feel like, you know, I mean, are you still training? Do you still, I mean, you're, you're second degree black belt jujitsu. You still do that stuff. You still practice it. So I, I'm, I'm back in, I'm in my third week of moving slowly doc. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm able to get back and um, I'm going to compete. My, my goal is to become a uh, black belt masters world champion next year. Nice. Again, so I can have a goal and uh, I'm not going to get in there and duke it out in MMA anymore. <laughs> But um, that's the goal, Doc. So I'm literally on the third week uh, and just slowly, you know, I have the younger guys helping me ease into it again. How do you, how do you feel? I feel great. Yeah. What's crazy is that 
you know, you never talk about training, right? But I train with this particular black belt that is, you know, one of those guys that are just strong <laughs> out of this world, right? <laughs> and they don't look huge. So I'm training with that guy, man, and I was able to catch him in our submission, you know, on my first day back. You know, and and you know how we think, man. You're not going to tell somebody to slow down. You just kind of go with it, right? And he was going 100%, and I was able to go. Like, that is crazy, dog. After four years, and my grips weren't tight or anything afterwards. Yeah, that that is that is pretty 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 neat to see. And uh, um, do you think if you would have uh, been carnivore during your MMA career, you would have had maybe different? Uh, you felt you like you would have fought better, maybe. Uh, I don't think fight better, dog. But I think I would have been able when I was working out. I would have been a stronger guy mm-hmm. because I feel my strength right now, and I haven't worked out. Like I'm extremely thin, you know. I like my body. I'm 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 in constant. Uh, um, what's it called? I'm 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 fasting, mm-hmm. right? Because I I really just now that I'm not working out heavy, I'm I'm really eating once a day, mm-hmm. you know. So my body's like healing itself all day long. And, 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 um, uh, go ahead. Well, it's interesting because your mom got you started on this, which is kind of, sometimes it goes the other way, but it's interesting. But what are you, what are you eating then? What's a, what's a one and once a day meal look like for you? What's typically what you're doing? So it's animal based, not just red meat. Um, a lot of eggs, mm-hmm. uh, bacon and, uh, ribeyes yeah. and hearts, yeah. chicken hearts. Yeah. That looks not, not too dissimilar to mine. I'm a lot of steak and eggs most days. In fact, I'll be having that here in a little bit. Looking forward to that. And um, are you finding like, you know, you know, because I mean, even as an athlete, people have, you know, issues with food cravings and, and kind of food addiction stuff. Is that do you find that uh, you mean you can stay away from the maybe the unhealthy stuff better? It's crazy, right? Because I would eat a lot of sugar cookies like a, like a freaking kid, right? Cookies and chocolate and milk at night, especially when I wasn't working out. Mm-hmm. Because in my mind, right, I, I, I guess I promised myself, oh, I will get in shape and then I eat healthy, right, when I'm not doing that. So it's crazy because I would just eat sugar every night and I was depressed and I guess it just it would just make it worse and worse and worse. Now I have zero desires eating anything else. I'm not hungry. It grosses me out. My friends are like, First, you know, like, wow, my, like, you're kind of a fanatic, right? But, uh, but I'm not, <laughs> you know, because I don't gain anything from people trying this out, right, and 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 improving their lifestyle, and it it, it just grosses me out. And what I've found out through like a few people, have, you know, like my my crowds getting into it, that the ones that keep wanting to eat something different are the ones that are not staying to the diet, uh, strictly to the diet. It's interesting because you said you're crowd, and, and I guess you probably have a lot of, you know, uh, MMA jujitsu guys around you. And it's kind of interesting to see this is starting to grow credit. You know, my, it, where I go, you know, it, which is, a, you know, electric, you know, part of electric jujitsu, Joe is program with, with uh, up here and up where I'm at, it's electric North. And probably ten of the guys in the in the gym are are on carnivore now since I started going over. So we had a whole bunch of those people, and yet guys like Carlos Machado is is now doing has been doing carnivore a while. So we've seen it it started to take off, and a lot of people are seeing this, you know, that it that it benefits them. So I think it's kind of neat to see that. Um, what what surprised you the most about the diet? Was there anything that you like? Wow, this really surprised me a lot. Like where you felt or something that happened when you were doing this. So before I forget, Doc, I have a friend, a particular friend. His name is Danny Smith. He's a former firefighter. He's part of your guys' crew. He's a teammate of mine. He's a black belt. And he had a massive heart heart attack in 2016. Massive. And uh, he went plant-based, size, body decline as well, found keto and his carnivore now. And uh, he's on the call right now as well. It's really cool, you know. And uh, uh, I would see him on Facebook, right? Like doing this carnivore thing, but I didn't understand. And then when I went and I'm like, Hey, Danny, I reached out and I saw, you know, he takes no medicines anymore. So, you know, that is a, that is a huge testimony, you know, among our crowd as well, mm-hmm. bigger than mine. But, um, doc, I feel, um, what I felt the difference is I was, I was depressed and I didn't even know. 
I mean, we're talking about like massive doctor, just depressed, bitter. And um, you don't know what you don't know, right? You just kind of go through it. And th- that's one of, that's the first thing that I've noticed. Doc. My energy, my mood, and I, and I was able to finally sleep well again. Makes a huge difference, you know, and, and I see it. I can do this talking to you. You look like you're happy and upbeat and got a lot of energy and, you know, full of life. And uh, it's got to feel, feel good with that. Um, do you, you know, it's one of the things about like, you know, I guess I'm sure MMA in general, but I know with jujitsu, there's a lot of mental part of it. You know, you're always thinking, always countering, always trying to figure out what your opponent's doing. And there's, there's, a, there's a lot of this mental stress. And it's, you know, like I said, if you're entrapped in a bad position, just having to be able to have the mental fortitude to, to relax and get through that. Do you find the mental part of it has gotten better for you as well? Absolutely. Um, I, I used to take pride, right. And, and as you see, I'm not a physically imposing kind of dude. And, uh, it was my mindset that was the strongest. I would train my butt off, right. And get my confidence from being in shape, doing what I could. And, uh, you know, I lost that without knowing I wasn't competing. You know, you think you're strong in it, but, um, it's helped me tremendously, doc, tremendously in my life, you know, and we're talking about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but even in business, right. Cause I'm in sales now. Mm-hmm. And imagine being in sales, being all bitter, right? Trying, hey, this is this is beneficial for you, right? But you can't lie about how you're feeling. So I'm 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 vibrant. I'm like a kid again, doctor. That's this is insane. You're like, man, I hear this every day. <laughs> I know it's awesome. That's fun. <laughs> how how about the rest of the family? Is anybody? I mean, obviously your mom was doing. I don't know who who else is in your family, yeah. but is anybody else in the family saying this is this is weird or this is crazy or what do they think? Uh, well, my sister, my niece, they're, they're it's full carnivore now. Mm-hmm. Um, I have an 87 or 88 year old aunt and but I wife South America. And she was walking with a cane now, right? And sitting down and uh, just not doing anything anymore. And 10 days of going carnivore. Her ankles were all swollen. They they were back to normal. You could see the bones, and she was walking again. And this is uh, three months ago. Wow, that's pretty amazing. That's yeah, even even at eighty seven years of age, you can still you can still see infinitely benefit. And, I, and I've seen some folks that are up there in their eighties that have seen big benefits for sure. Um, you know, as far my hair's growing back, Doc. <laughs> Good for you. I kid you not. I thought I'm like, no, I'm tripping. I just want hair again. And I'm seeing it. There's all these follicles, like in the area that it was completely nothing. It's yeah. like you know, all these little babies. It's crazy. It's interesting. Yeah. It's interesting when you, you know, it's, and some people say, well, it's just because you cut out junk food and the sugary stuff and meat has nothing to do it. I, I kind of push back on that. I think that, that meat is actually very nourishing for us. And, you know, we have to eat something. Do you, um, uh, as far as, so you've been doing it for six months now, has you seen a change in your body composition at all? At all? Yeah, I'm muscle and skin. Yeah. And I'm not even working out heavy yet. And my body was aligned. You could really see that I was, I was shifted, you know, because my leg was longer than the other. Mm-hmm. And uh, yesterday, I believe, was like the last day of my body just getting in place in Arizona. Like I felt this thing loosened up and I could breathe again. That's one of the things that I also doctor, I didn't say, I, as I mentioned, I was very asthmatic and I grew up always um, sneezing and doing these, you know, like, you know, every morning and I'm like, yeah, that's just part of my lifestyle. That's gone, doc, completely gone. I could never sleep with fans on and whatnot. You know, like I, I just couldn't. I would, I would get sick, and it was probably part mental as well. And but I mean, obviously, it has to do with the with the uh, food. But that's gone, dog. That was my whole life. Every morning, sniffling and like yeah. you know, like a little sick person in the beginning. It's gone. Yeah, it's interesting because asthma is. You know, we're finding out it's asthma has a lot of an autoimmune com- component to it, and I've seen a lot of people that come off their inhalers and their asthma will get better. Where do you you're, you're in Florida now? But where do you normally live and train? Where Where's your normal location? In Orlando and uh, Gracie Baja. Oh, okay, okay, All yeah, right. very nice. Uh huh. 
how often are you so as you you know make an approach to to say you want to go to the masters worlds i mean i'm not it is ibjjf that's next spring or something like that i guess is that is that the plan that is the plan and uh i'm training three days a week now and uh the two days that i'm off i'm, I'm moving my body mm -hmm. a lot of uh breath work and uh just getting everything strong again you know, I'm working on my joints with a lot of bands to be able to uh, sustain all that and like really put in the, the heavy workload. Do you have to either gain or lose weight? Is there a weight class you're trying to trying to trying to get to? So I've always competed at middleweight, middle and medium heavy, which is a um, hundred and uh, hundred and seventy five pounds. And jiu jitsu at 185. Mm -hmm. So right now, I'm, I started carnivore. I think I was like 201. And I'm uh, like 183 right now. Oh, okay. Okay. So I'm, um, I will probably do either or weight class. I believe in jiu jitsu as a tip dog that uh, you shouldn't, you shouldn't lose weight, cut weight like an MMA mm -hmm. because you know, you weigh in right before you get on the mat. So I believe on, if anything, you know, go up in weight so you can be stronger. Yeah, it's 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 uh, it's because I'm I'm about two fifty, and so it's a little bit different different style of game, I guess. When you get to when you get that big, you know, it's more of the smash stuff, and it's uh, it's you know, you do you, you I guess you play to your strengths, you know, type of thing. But do you find that um, you know, like I said, you you know, flexibility has that been is that coming back for you more and more flexibility now? Yep. I was extremely flexible growing up. It was part of my strength and I was completely gone. And, you know, I had to like put my hand on my knee to reach over and grab things over and over. And, uh, I've stopped doing that about four days ago. And, 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 uh, the flexibility is, is, is coming back. I'm able to swing my legs over, you know, like a regular jujitsu stretch that we do. Mm -hmm. I'm able to do all that again. Oh, nice. Um, so you're, you said you started 201, you're down to 183. How much do you eat it? How much did you eat a day to lose that weight? How much are you like typically eating as a, you know, 40 year old, six foot one guy? I, um, I would eat until I was, I couldn't eat that, right. Until I was full, really. That would be about like, um, like a, this size ribeye and like, and like so another about, half of that. Yeah, it's like a pound and a half or something like that. Yeah. Uh huh, and about five to six six eggs okay. every time with it. Is that once a day, or is that a couple times a day, or what? What was the kind? Once a day, and uh, sometimes I'm. Uh, I mean, it's a it's a damn barbecue at the at the house at my mom's house every day now, right? So <laughs> if I'm over there, you know, and they're yeah. doing something, I, and yeah. I'm hungry, I would I would get some of that. As well. What 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 made your mom start doing this? Is, you know, it's kind of at sixty seven. A lot of people think well, that's kind of crazy. What, how did she get in, hooked into this stuff? Um, man, she's gangster, man. Like everything I've done, like ah, oh, you're a badass, Mike. You fuck. Like it's it's really you know it's from her side. My dad was a musician, so it wasn't from his side. <laughs> um, and um, I th I, I believe she was looking to um. To help my sister lose weight. Mm -hmm. And as she wasn't, you know, in the same person and she was doing her research, she just studies all day, doc. Like, really. And I saw her doing this research, like, wow, I found this thing. You know, we can feel better. Because uh, I always ate right. Like, we didn't grow up with sodas and all these different things at home. And mom just found this new way that can improve the family's life. Yeah, that, that that's that's very nice to have the whole family on board. It makes things a lot easier for sure, and you have the support around you. Um, do you? Uh, is there anybody that that kind of gives you a hard time about this, or anybody saying, "Hey, you're crazy" and that type of stuff? Are you getting too much of that? In the beginning, you know, my 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 vegan friends that drink Red Bull and stuff, you know, it's very funny. Like those people, like they were, you know, like, "Hey, you're eating that." I'm like, "Look what you drink." <laughs> what can you tell me, right? Uh, but they're meeting me too. So they're not giving me crap anymore. I mean, you can't deny the results. And I'm not over here like pushing it. You know, we go out to eat and 
can you make me a ribeye just with salt, please? Like, what? No sides? It's free, man. Like, yeah, I, I get it. I'm just going to have it weird like this today. <laughs> and they're like, okay, just protein style. You know, make a joke out of it. I'm looking to be lean this summer. They bring it, but, you know, it's been six months. So my friends see that. And you can't deny the results. And as I mentioned to you, I was bitter. I was just mad, right? And and that's gone. So, um, yeah, they're 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 coming to the to the right side, Doc. That's that's good. Yeah, that's good. You see, and, and it's nothing like you know showing the example and being successful, and people really. You know, they see that and particularly the other athletes as they see as, as you, you know, like you start surprising people are like, wait a minute, where'd that come from? You know, type of stuff. And uh, you get it, it definitely it definitely has an impact. Um, do you um, you know, as far have you had any negatives since you've been doing this? Any any like like was a transition hard for you or anything like that? Uh, you know, the first seven days, you know, body got a little bit different. He may be a little looser than usual. That's it. So, that is it. So pretty easy transition. Had you, had you played like, you know, all the years when you were doing and cutting for fights and stuff like that, what was a typical diet? You know, you said you, you know, between fights, you'd binge on a bunch of chocolate and sugar, but like when you were getting ready to fight, what was it? What was a, the, the fight diet that you were on? Like if you weren't into camp or something like that. Okay, so I'm six one, and I fought at 170 pounds. I would walk around 195, 200 pounds, mm-hmm. and um, I would do a three month, 90 day of um, only uh, red meat, eggs, and um, and salad. Right, so um, I would have that, and I would have a lot of uh, fish oil as well for the fats. That's why I say, dog. If I would have known, man, just put a fatty, fatty ribeye in there, it would have been good. But, uh, but that was my diet for ninety days. I would have no carbs, and then the week of the fight, when we would cut weight instead of me cutting weight, because I would be around one sixty eight, sixty seven underweight actually, I would only have carbs the week of. Okay. So now my body would be getting stronger, like the other guys getting depleted. And um, that was our strategy at the time. Okay. Okay. So it was kind of, you know, very but much it was heavy meat, very much a low carb diet for most of the cutting phase. And then you drop some carbs back in right before the performance. Um, do you, fi- I mean, again, you, you said you just kind of recently gone back, but I mean, are you finding any difficulty without the carbs performing, doing the high intensity stuff? You know, I mean, obviously jujitsu is a little bit of, you know, you relax and then you go for it. You know, it's, it's it's up and down all the time with bullet with the with the intensity. Do you have any trouble hitting high intensity stuff? Um, how my body performed during that time? So. Yeah, I mean, are you like when you're rolling? You know, do you you know because some people like I, when I took up jujitsu, people say well, you're not going to be able to do it because all these guys are eating carbs. And you know, I was like, yeah, sure I can. <laughs> you know, I haven't had any issues. But have you had any issues? Do you find like your performances? I mean, it sounds like it's been better so far. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I understand your question now. Thank you. Um, and I've, and I've actually heard that, that one, the same thing you just told me, you know, in a, in a video of you saying it, and I would tell myself like, huh, you know, I feel amazing now. Now that I start training, we'll put this carnivore thing to the test. I mean, we'll see. And, um, doc, I don't need anything, man. (laughs) It's just water, nothing declined, you know, um, I'm not, I'm not running out of gas. There's literally no lactic acid that's building on your forms, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So one thing, I guess you see much your forearms cause you know, you, are you doing much, are you doing much in the gi or are you do mostly doing no gi? I do both. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I find the gi for me, the grips, you know, cause you, your, your forearms can get tired from pulling the grips all the time. And that's just something that you used uh-huh. to. And I, I don't know. It seems like it beats up your fingers more. <laughs> I don't know if you, uh-huh. if you see that, but maybe yes, it's just it does. Right. It does for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting. What, um, <clears throat> so you said you roll with a black belt the other day that you normally roll with and you were able to submit him. Does, does he feel like, Hey, what's going on here? And you, did you tell him you're doing a carnivore diet or. He's the one that brought it to my attention. It's like, bro, you haven't been working out. You say, but like, I can't break your grips. 
And then I'm just, you know, as I'm going, I'm like, wow, this thing is crazy, you know, because I haven't been working out. And um, I mean, this is a strong guy. He's got to be like 220, mm-hmm. you know, and I, and I was able to like go toe to toe with that guy. Dog. That's not normal. If somebody, you know, if I have a, I'm sure there's a lot of athletes and here, like going toe to toe with somebody that is stronger than you after, you know, four years, essentially. Like that is insane. That's not normal. Well, that's good for you. I mean, and, and you know, it's definitely like I said, the reason there is weight classes in these things because if you if you're giving up fifty pounds, that's a that's a lot. Particularly if they're e- pretty close to equal skill, and you're you know, usually the usually the, the bigger person is going to have that advantage in many cases. And you know, like I said, when you see all these absolute championships, usually you know the heavyweight or the light heavyweight wins it all. Typically, it's pretty rare. Like maybe like Marcel Garcia might have been. The exception to that rule, I guess. I don't know what class he fought in, but um, how long? Um, how long do you can, do you do you can do you suspect you'll continue doing this carnivore diet? Is this is this something like, hey, I'm I'm going to do this indefinitely? Uh, yeah. I mean, I've, I've like, why would I change? You know, I don't miss anything. I feel amazing. Um, you know, I I I own a uh, digital franchise in fourteen different countries. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I have about 120 members on my, in my business and I just don't waste time thinking about what I'm going to eat, doc. Yeah. Yes. Like, I, you know, I, I, I can, I, can I, I love being a peak performer. I, 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 I push myself to be a high performance for individual, you know, especially now and, uh, as an entrepreneur, I, I look at business as, as a sport. So I'm, I'm, I consider myself a business athlete. You know, I train myself like an, like uh, as a, you know, I, I prepare myself like a businessman and an athlete, right, to perform well. And it's, it's, it's amazing. I, I, it's, it was literally a waste of my life thinking, you know, like I, I, I live to eat. I got to eat seven times a day, every two and a half hours, blah, blah, blah. Like it, it was crazy. And now, you know, like now I'll eat one, two times a day throw that thing medium rare, psh, 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 some salt and I'm, and, and I'm good. It definitely, definitely simplifies things, uh, you know, significantly. Do you have, what about, do you have any issues with hydration? You know, jujitsu can be, you sweat, you can sweat a lot, you know, and, and do you have to worry about hydrating electrolytes, things like that? Um, in the beginning, obviously, you know, you're scared of the salt and I never ate a lot of salt. Uh, my entire life and uh i was i was using electrolytes uh i like the brand element and um i haven't used electrolytes in in three months um i've also you know being a former athlete i've, I've just hydrated a lot naturally mm-hmm. I was, i'm 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 literally till today a guy just i walk around with a gallon of water everywhere i go so yeah, I, I don't feel that, Doc. I, I feel you know, I feel the need that I need to hydrate, obviously, all day long. But um, yeah, there's no lack of anything. How how is how has uh, you know MMA and Jiu Jitsu impacted the rest of your life as far as your ability to like do business and stuff? Does it do you, do you feel that you can sort of lean on some of that training or that mindset to help you out in the rest of business? One thousand percent. I thought, you know, uh, my goals were to be, for example, who Conor McGregor is today. That was my vision, right? Mm-hmm. I quit college in two thousand to be a freaking UFC fighter. My mom's like, "What?" You know. Um. But um, sheesh, I forgot where I was going with that. What, what was the question, though? I had a good point. How how your 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 martial arts training has impacted you yes. in general, with business or life in general? Yeah. Um, so my goal was to be that, right. That person that I had, uh, uh, but I guess life right now at 40, uh, it doesn't play out exactly the way you want it. Right. Even if it's to the same destination, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu makes martial arts because, um, when I really switched, I had three Jiu-Jitsu schools along the journey doc. And uh, I taught, you know, for 17 years, but I didn't want to do that anymore. I got, I got burned out. You know, I felt like, um, they wouldn't give me the, the income that I was looking for. 
You know, I didn't want to be self-employed. There's nothing wrong with that, but I had to live at the gym. And I, I guess I just wanted something different. So, uh, for instance, now I'm partnered with a company that trains people on leadership, digital entrepreneurship, money, and investment, right? And I went completely broke, Doc, in 2015 because I blew all the money away that I made, right? Never made millions, you know, low six figures. But uh, I didn't know what to do with it, so I blew it away. And during that struggle, you know, um, I really found a passion. It was really messed up. How come they don't teach us how to um, how money works? Because I was just a kid with big dreams, and I was supposed to help the entire family, right? And I messed that up because I didn't know how it worked. Now, me being the fighter that I am, I felt like okay. I used to teach people how to protect themselves physically, right? I've seen grown men, you know, 40, 45 years old when I was 20, 22, 23 teaching, and they would walk in and not even be able to look in your eyes, right? Because they were unconfident. They were bullied, you know, they were the world beat them up. And then a year of training that, you know, you see some, you know, with the chest up, you know, maybe he's gotten on a, a girlfriend now and he's become more confident. So, where I'm going with this is that if you and I were friends in a village, like I say, let's say 500 years ago, a thousand years ago, the older guys would have put, bring us and teach us how to hunt, right? So we can provide for the village. So how come in today's day and age, they don't teach us how to hunt? I feel like money is our today's hunting tool. And that pissed me off, dog. So I bring all the strength, all the things that, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu helped me form to be strong, to be able to help people protect themselves financially with the same information that I've learned. We're not an investment firm or anything. You learn what to do with your own money. Uh, so it's, um, sorry, Doc, I gave you a pause in there. <laughs> it's, um, so anyway, that really uh, forged a lot of, fortitude and strength in me because uh, um, I'm fighting the same way you are with, with foods, the way people have been programmed on how money works, especially in the digital age, being able to leverage different things. And the worst thing that happens to me here, doctor, I don't get punched on the mouth, right? They say no in sales. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's not that tough really. Yeah, so you, like you said, as relevant, no one's punching your face or trying to choke you to death, and so it's the, 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 it makes life a lot less stressful. Do you find because you mentioned, you know, if we would have been thousand, you know, five thousand years ago, we'd be taught some different skills. Do you find that a lot of like young men, in particular, as we're seeing them come up, are lacking certain traditionally masculine skills? Because there's been this sort of belief that you know maybe men should be more docile and, and even more feminine and, and just more sort of softer and, and we're taking away from the savageness of, of what a lot of men just do and what we thrive at. What are your thoughts on, on the way? I mean, should, should most men learn how to fight and, and that type of stuff? What are your thoughts on that? Yes, I believe so. A thousand percent. Well, first of all, doc, if, if, if we ever go to war and things aren't as awesome as they are right now in the world, if you don't know how to fight, you're screwed. If you don't know how to defend yourself, like it, it, even in entrepreneurship, I've noticed that it is the strong survive. It's in a different way. But in the jungle, it will be the same way. I mean, you know, we're all civil now. But wait until there's no food and see how this thing, right, can get out of hand. So if you don't know how to protect yourself, right, how you're always going to be. I mean, you're, you're a gazelle among lions. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's the practical aspect of it. Yes. If it ever came down to it, you know, the people that know how to defend themselves are going to fare better. But I mean, it's just, just as far as like the mental outlook from day to day stuff, do you find that, you know, <clears throat> knowing how to defend yourself and be physically fit has a benefit for just day to day living, even if you're not fighting? Yes, absolutely. Um, that was why I started training duck. And, uh, while I was sick in these four years, it's funny because I was so unconfident because I couldn't turn. So I just didn't feel safe myself. And, um, you know, I've teaching for 17 years under the Gracie Baja flag. It was a great thing that happened to me because I've been able to see kids that train with me when they were seven years old, they went to college and 
if a girl is ever in a bad situation, right, and somebody is in between their legs and they put their hand on their neck, which is right how you would be if you're being attacked, that is the prime position that we live in, as in like training Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So even if you know how to use your feet and you're going to put someone, your feet in the, in, on the hips, right? Or get somebody in a triangle choke on a arm bar because they're really giving you what you need, right? Is, um, is one of the most fulfilling things that I've done. And, uh, and I know that everybody should train Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And it's not to fight, but it's to be able to be confident. So if you're not scared, Doc, I see a lot of people in fear that, you know, because of what you're saying exactly. Not just women, you know, but men that are, it's like, what's wrong with you, man? Like, you want to shake him, you know, like, wake up. But it's a lot of those guys, you know, like, they just, it's just not tough. And they walk around like, like prey. But those people, when they train and they're confident enough to know that nobody can mess with them, it's not that you're walking around, right, looking for a fight. But now you don't think of the danger around you because you know you can protect yourself. And I believe that that, gives a human being right the ability to be able to pursue their dreams whatever it is yeah yeah i think when you know when you feel confident and you you feel physically good that y- your brain just works better you know you're not you're not running scared or anxious and we have so many people unfortunately we have so many people that are in that situation where they're prey and they're they're very anxious and scared and they get angry and violent and there's a lot of you know, I think negativity that comes out of that when people are just feel vulnerable, you know, I think the natural response, you know, if you corner an animal, they're going to strike, you know, they're going to, but if you, you know, if you, you know, you kind of corner yourself by, by just being sick and ill all the time. And it's kind of, kind of interesting. You pointed out when you couldn't turn, you feel like you, you feel vulnerable. You just feel like, Oh, somebody could, somebody kind of street could take me down real quick. And, uh, you know, I was just thinking, I was, you mentioned a try, I put somebody, in, I, I got somebody tapped in a triangle last night. So I thought that, that does feel good when you, you know, when you manage to pull those things off. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a, a, a big positive to your, to your overall mental outlook. Um, do you find that, uh, you know, as far as, uh, you know, training for 17 years, I mean, is this something you're going to be doing when you're 80 years old? You think that's going to be still something you're doing? Yeah, absolutely, Doc. I've been training for 24 years. I taught for 17. Okay. And uh, I can't see myself ever stopping. I mean, jujitsu is it's truly life. And um, there's, there's a bond that happens, you know, between you and your teammate. When you're training, you leave it all on the mat. And, you know, like at whatever age. I mean, think about it. You never lose the kid and you sort of the same because you're tumbling around like a kid. And people say like, wow, I can't move anymore. Or I used to be flexible like this. Like, yeah, of course you were. But you stopped doing the things also that you were doing when you were a kid. You're not rolling around. You're not rocking. You're not stretching all the time without knowing. So I believe that Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu gives you that aside, right? Uh, That is from mobility and all that. Helps everybody just to be better. I I, I don't I don't see myself. I, I I've been doing this since I was sixteen, Doc. And the the leadership, right? I've I've followed in in, in my organization, and I've seen them from like thirty five years old. Now they're sixty, sixty five, still training every single day. Um, that's my example, right? Yes. They're healthier than anybody around. You know that doesn't train around their age. Yeah. They feel good. They're strong. And life is different. Life should be like that for everybody. Yeah, there's a saying that, you know, we don't get, uh, we don't stop playing because we get old. We stop, we we get old because we stop playing, you know, and it's it's kind of, a, I think there's a lot of truth to that. You know, it's, you know, you got to keep doing the things you do when you're young and, and that'll keep you young, so to speak. Are you, I mean, you know, you mentioned Danny's with, I guess maybe I didn't know if Danny's in the same, you know, jujitsu place as you in, in Florida, but are you getting, you guys influencing any other people within that community that you're in to start looking at carnivore? Absolutely. I mean, Danny and I have been in, in contact a lot. I've been helping him with the social media so he can get better at it. Right. And not just get better at it. So he can start putting that word out there because people need to hear this thing. And people are people are are, are getting their body declining because of uh because of the lack of information out there. So first and foremost, I appreciate you so much for for doing what you do, man. And uh, 
because I'm 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 on a similar mission as well, right? But helping people how to uh, how to make money, right? Because if you don't make money, how can how, how can you like not even right have access to the right food, which is messed up? So uh, I, I love what you're doing, Doc. I appreciate you, man, and uh, it's been a tremendous help for myself as well. Wow. And Danny has been um, really working his butt off, you know, trying to figure it out. The social media thing, you know, it's tough when you're starting out and uh, to get it to get the word out there, leading by example. And uh, you know, he's like I. We've had probably you know about fifty people that he let them know that we were going to get on this on this podcast. Let me because you you know you said you trained throughout this time with with the Gracie Baja organization. Now they have a Gracie diet, which is definitely not carnivore. So how does that uh, you know? Are you can you like? Are they going to say hey, you need to be on the Gracie diet or what? I, I don't know that they push it that hard. I, I started out at Gracie Baja at the headquarters in Irvine, and then I moved up here, and there wasn't one close enough to me to continue there. So that's where I used to teach. I taught there, Doc. Okay. What year is that? With Felipe Delmonica? Yeah, Felipe. Yeah, yeah, Felipe Delmonica. Yeah, he was our he was a head guy. He's a great he's a good guy. But I was only I was there for about three months before I ended up moving out of state. So, but that's where I started. So, right yeah, good crew. But I mean, I mean, what year? Uh, just, uh, we're in 2020. So I think I started there in 2020, 2020, 2021. I'm trying to think when I moved. I think it was begin end of 2020, beginning of 2021. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, something like that. Oh, I was yeah. gone from California already. I had moved back. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, and that's where I, that's where, that's where my first start was. You know, I did a couple with Georgie Carhani, you know, his, his MMA group up there. Uh, he came down and trained. Yeah, millennia. Yeah, well, yeah, he's with Millennia. Yeah, exactly. You know all those guys out there. And then I was out there with uh, Kevin. Oh God, I'm thinking I'm forgetting. Oh God, I was at one the other day, and I can't remember. I was in. I was in. Uh, oh, the Inland Empire. What, what is that? What do they call that? Anyway, it's fun stuff. I see it. Uh -huh. But as far as like I said, the Gracie diet. Any thoughts on that? You know, is it, is it maybe not the best thing for you or anybody else? Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, I'm going to talk to Master Carlos Gracie Jr., you know, and let him know that he ought to uh, start adding some some red meat in his diet. Mm -hmm. Show him all the, uh, you know, do do what I do because um, I give people the information. Send them your YouTube page, you know, and um, other people as well that are friends with you and uh, colleagues. And um, I tell them, do your research, man. Yeah. Just check it out. Yeah. So, um, I mean, yeah, it'll be interesting it's to just, see how what it is. it's interesting to see as more and more, you know, combat athletes adopt a more carnivorous or, or even a fully carnivorous thing and how that, how that expands over time. Because, you know, the sports scientists will tell us you can't perform well without carbs. And yet we're seeing more and more people do that. And that, in fact, actually improve their performance. So that's, that's fun to see. Um, Mikey, we're running out of time. Unfortunately, I got to do some consultations here in a few minutes. So tell people where do they find you if they want to know more about your business or MMA or you've got a social media page, where do they go? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they can find me on, uh, Instagram at Mikey GB. It's Mikey Gracie Baja, Mikey okay. GB on social media. You can find me on YouTube under Mikey Gomez as well. I'm always putting, uh, content about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu leadership entrepreneurship and uh finances okay. everything that i've learned throughout the journey so people don't have to be broken they can afford the quality of food to have a better lifestyle as well all right i just i just found you there i just followed you so good deal i'll look forward to the for the jujitsu content so i can learn some stuff so <laughs> anyway thanks so much appreciate it hopefully i get to run into you one day maybe i'll see you at, at, a, at a competition when i you know because i'd like to compete at you know the master's level too you know and Get going there. So we'll run into each other. Anyway, thanks so much, Danny. Thanks for, uh, you know, yes. bringing Mikey along. And uh, thanks so much. Anyway, have a great one. And let's, let's hear, I, I'd love to hear how you're doing, you know, a year from now, how the competition, if you go to Brazil, if you go to the world's, love to hear how it turns out for you. Doc, I'm going to see you. Okay. I will see you. There is no hoping. All right. And I'll right. probably compete next to you as well. Perfect. I appreciate you so much. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. We'll see everybody tomorrow. Take care.